please welcome your host for this evening, Mike Berbiglia. singers and dancers uh, that's crescendos. It's a good thing I was watching, by the way, <laughs> to know what I'm coming into. They put in the most talented singers and dancers like crescendos in a break dancing move that I'm not even sure happened. <laughs> I'm not convinced that wasn't a hologram just now. Because I don't think human bodies can do that, but... Uh, K-pop! <laughs> Holy cow! Are you kidding me? Um, I'm the host. Uh, welcome to the 875th annual Lucille Lortel Awards. I'm your backup host, because the actual host canceled. Wayne Brady, host of Let's Make a Deal, canceled 10 days ago. Apparently there was something better behind door number two. So... But you know what's funny is, I wasn't even the second choice either. I asked, like, George Forbes calls me and he asks, I go, who is the second choice? And he goes, Billy Porter, Sean Hayes, Danielle Brooks, Darren Chris, and Deborah Messing. So you're looking at the seventh choice. The host, the 876th Lucille Lortel Awards. Even though I was the seventh choice for this job, I hope that by the end of the night, you'll think that I should have been the third choice. <laughs> so George Forbes calls me, uh, panicked. I'll say panicked. I don't think I'm stepping out of line saying panicked. He goes, uh, Mike, uh, we have this great gig. It pays nothing. No one will see it. And I said, it's just like off-Broadway theater. <laughs> Perfect. I know all about it. I'm all about gigs like that. That's almost practically all I do. Uh, it's possible they gave me the job because of their sympathy for my horrible illness. I rarely speak of this, but last year I was diagnosed with theater mania. <laughs> it is a rare disease where you develop an obsession with minute theater details. <laughs> Fortunately, I have a GoFundMe page set up that raises money to buy me orchestra-level house seats to Broadway hits. I know this seems extreme, but there's only one cure. So whatever you can give, $275, $439. My live stream is to see Hamilton from Orchestra Center, which would, would, would cost a mere $2,400. So for the price, of a small coffee bean farm in Peru, I could see Hamilton from about 40 feet away. Uh, some of you guys are like, this guy's funny. Some of you guys are, who, who the fuck is this? And why is he keeping us from watching people win awards? Um, when I said, oh yeah, they, uh, I was very surprised. I, I, I honestly was surprised they asked me to host this thing because uh, I, I haven't been asked to host anything uh, since 2012. Completely true story. Uh, my first solo show is called Sleepwalk With Me. We made it into an independent piece of film. And thanks a lot. That's really nice. And, and uh, so they asked me to host in 2012 the Gotham Independent uh, Film Awards. And, um, and it was really like the star sort of event. It was like, like Amy Adams and, and Matt Damon and Claire Danes, all these people, and, and David O. Russell. And David O. Russell was like the director I'm a huge fan of, Silver Lion's Playbook, Flaring with Disaster, The Fighter, etc. And but infamously, on the set of I Heart Huckabees, he shouted at Lily Tomlin um, in this way that really not advisable. And uh, <laughs> it's caught on tape, it went sort of viral. If you haven't seen it, I wrote out a transcript of what he said, and this is, again, this is not what I said. This is something he said, and I wrote it down. It says to Lily, the great Lily Tom, the great Lily Tom, and he says, 
I'm just trying to fucking help you, you understand me? I'm just being a fucking collaborator. I'm just trying to help you figure out the fucking picture, okay, bitch? I'm not here to be fucking yelled at. I've been working this thing for three fucking years to have some fucking cunt yell at me in front of the fucking crew when I'm trying to help you, bitch. So I thought, so I thought I should talk about that on stage. Because if comedy is tragedy plus time, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. So, so David Russell is probably where you guys are, probably about third row. And uh, I say David Russell's here tonight. Uh, he's known, one of my favorite directors, known for going to extremes to get exactly what he wants. The great director Ilya Kazan once said, "You do whatever it takes to get the shot." And David O. Russell once said. I'm just trying to fucking help you understand me. I'm just being a fucking collaborator. I'm just trying to help you figure out the fucking picture, okay, bitch? I'm not here to be fucking yelled at. I work on this fucking thing for three fucking years and have some fucking cunt yell at me in front of the crew. And I'm trying to help you, bitch. Two great directors basically saying the same thing. The audience really enjoyed it. David O. Russell left. And. Uh, which was unfortunate timing because he was just about to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> I know, I know. I, what are you gonna do? Uh, the woman who books me comes over to me and she goes, Mike, uh, she goes at my, comes at my table, she goes, David is very upset about your joke and I think he might leave. Will you talk to him? And I said, absolutely. Uh, so, because I thought worst case scenario goes terribly. <laughs> Best case scenario, he makes me the lead in his next film. And <laughs> so, uh, so I'm walking with this woman. And she goes, "It's my fault. I never should have let you tell that joke. I should have screened your jokes. I felt so bad because I want to be like, I never would have let you screen my jokes." <laughs> I would have sent you decoy jokes. <laughs> I would never hand someone a piece of paper with the word cunt written on it. I wasn't raised that way. <laughs> but, but instead I was like, yeah, it's probably your fault. Who knows? And then, so we get to the bathroom and David O. Russell storms out towards the exit. She follows him and I follow her and he looks back at her and he goes, Give your fucking award to someone else! And I was like, awesome. This is like we're in the video. <laughs> so sitting at our table was Jared Leto, and um, but I didn't know it was Jared Leto because he was preparing for his role in Dallas Buyers Club, and so he lost all his weight, shaved his eyebrows, and so he looks like this sort of strange skeleton man. And, uh, <laughs> and he leans over and he goes, I haven't eaten in 21 days. <laughs> And that joke made me laugh my ass off. And I was like, thank you, strange man. That means a lot to me, because I'm in a lot of trouble right now. So, so apparently David O. Russell comes back to the event, gets up on stage to receive the award, and he gives a great speech, he's got a lot of wisdom, sits down, all these reporters come to, over to him, and they go, what do you think, Mike, David, what do you think, Mike, for big this joke? And he goes, well, Comedians are gonna make jokes about what they're gonna make jokes about. And they came over to me and they're like, Mike, what'd you think of David's reaction? And I was like, whatever he said, it's fine. <laughs> and an article came out in Variety magazine that week about the Gotham Awards and the opening line of the article read, and I quote, before any winners were announced at Monday's 22nd edition of the Gotham Awards, one thing became clear, Mike Birbiglia will not be in David O. Russell's next picture. <laughs> And that ended up being true. Uh, and I think that's fair. Uh, since then, no one has asked me to host their event. Uh, which leaves me to, for a lot, a lot of free time to work on my own solo shows. And, uh, and that's how I ended up here, again. So I will be making no jokes this evening at anyone's expense. Why would I? This is an extraordinary group of people that we're honoring. There are about 15 presenters. I'm just going to 
Bring it on, keep it moving. Uh, this thing's gonna be about two hours long. Fair warning, most of you will lose. <laughs> Me too, I'm not, I, I will probably too. I'm, I'm in the category. And, uh, and uh, but I bring that up only because I've lost a lot of these things and at the beginning of the night, I'm always like, I don't care about winning. And at the end of the night, I'm like, I could have been somebody! You know, and uh, I don't want you to go through that. I just want you to feel that now. And then like, if you win, then like, oh, and then I won, I guess that's something. Um, I just want you to know that there's gonna be an after party after this and if you lost, uh, I'll make a deal with you. You can, we'll, you can come up to me and we'll, and and we'll do a loser high five. <laughs> and uh, but you got to go. I lost, and then go, and then high five me. And uh, and there's gonna be a lot of loser fives around the room. Great way to make friends. You guys can do it with each other. And uh, but what better group of people to make friends with? An extraordinary group of people who are about to lose over the next two hours. <laughs> the, the first presenter, uh, the first presenters tonight at the 1,527th Lucille Hotel Awards are a Tony winner who will next be seen in her critically acclaimed one woman show as part of Stars in Concerts, live from Lincoln Center on PBS May 17th. Uh, our other presenter just received his third Tony nomination this year for the role of Larry in Burn This. Please welcome Annalie Ashford and Brandon Uranowitz! <laughs> <laughs>